three. Zero. <laughs> okay, all done. No. This is like the anti-cribs. <laughs> like, I don't care about any of this fancy stuff. It's cool, it's nice, but I'd be just as happy in a shoebox. <laughs> Come on in. We don't want to get Grandma in the picture. You can you can be in the picture, Grandma. I don't want to be in the picture. We will all Whoa. So presidential. Hi all. A little warmer. It does feel warmer in here. It's like an apartment, right? See? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. It's like a bar area. Grandma's gonna be in this. Was that, sweetie? Yeah. See you later. All right, now listen, no matter what you do, don't go in this room. No one's allowed in this room, okay? You're, wel you're welcome to look around, but no one goes in this room. There's like a challenge. No one enters this room. If you enter this room, there are dire consequences. Ooh. Not a bad oh. view. Costume for later. <laughs> I heard you got a hat. Oh yeah. yeah. It says make red hats wearable again. You notice <laughs> that? Like anytime anybody's wearing a hat, you're like, yeah, make America great again hat. <laughs> this is the world's most confusing shower. It's uh, it's very moody. It's definitely a female. It has two settings: boiling magma hot and butt ass cold. <laughs> Sorry, those are the two. And this is a weird, like, there's like seating area for friends in case mm. you want to bring people in. I don't know what's going on in this presidential suite. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine if you put me in a shoebox. Just put me in like a small apartment. I'm happy. This is, uh, this is like the anti cribs. <laughs> like, I don't care about any of this fancy stuff. It's cool. It's nice, but I'd be just as happy in a shoebox. Did Naz make you stay here? And that's made me stay here. I tried to give it to her. I was like, you, you're like you, you're the one working hard. You should stay in the presidential suite. She's like, no, you should have it. You should get. It. All right, all right. I'll take the presidential suite. <laughs> okay. But this is the place. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, now that I, I, re I really don't have any attachment to like stuff anymore. Because you realize it doesn't make you feel any different. And so once you have it, now I appreciate it, but I don't want it. Like I don't want I don't I don't feel like incomplete without stuff. I get, it's it's a nice thing being at a at a place where you, you just want what you have. That's that's like that is winning. Wanting what you have. Oh, I, you know what I like about about this is we're <laughs> But most since it's a presidential suite, it's like the big event, the standard thing in like internet marketing land. It'd be like, look at all of the pimpness going on, and I'm like, ah, put me in a shoebox. It's fine. I just want to hang out with good people. I drink celery juice. Remember, there's one rule. Don't go in this room. Don't try to go in this room. Do not enter this room. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Alfred B. Hyatt. Did you make that up? Yes. I just <laughs> <laughs> 
So what's uh, what's going through your head with the conference right now? Well, <sighs> um, this is my blankie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny, funny story about this. I sent an email to the list once saying this would be a, this would be a good niche market selling baby blankets. Um, Esther's had that since she was born. She will not take a replacement. She will not take. Like we have, we bought her a placement once and she calls it two night night because that's night night because she takes it to night night with her and she will not take a substitute. It's really funny. Oh, what's going through my head pre event? Um, I'm not nervous. I'm. Um, not scared I'm like uh, concerned because I want it to be great mm. I want it to, everything to be right I want everyone to have an amazing experience I feel unprepared because I find the most the more I prepare the worse things are and it prevents me from just going and being and the beingness is what makes it great so I feel unprepared I feel a little um I always get really introverted at these events because everyone knows me and I don't know everyone and that makes me a little, like I appreciate it but there's also like a uh you know if you go if you go to a party and you try to remember 25 names and then it's 500 people who know a lot about you that's all that's a lot people um, have listened to hours and hours and hours of your voice and videos so maybe I should just speak to them in podcast voice. Hello. It's nice to meet you. Welcome to the Capitals Conference. <laughs> this is the ballroom. Um, I'm using myself and our business, capitalism.com, as the case study in this keynote. But 80% of it is about the journey and using myself as the case study so that it can be plugged into someone else's life, which is a really delicate balance. And the cool thing is when you're in a spot where you're building a business just because you want to amplify the process of what you want to do anyway, you can open up the curtains and show everyone everything. There's nothing to hide. It's why I laugh at people want to I'm like tell me about your business They're like oh, I don't talk about my products and then you don't actually like it you're just <laughs> you're you just you you're afraid somebody's gonna take your when you're just doing it because you want to do it you can just be like open book doesn't matter if someone tries to copy you they can't because they're not you it's really the uniqueness that we all have that is our greatest value and our and our greatest asset talk about that a lot it took me years to just be okay with that and I have always learned from mistakes I make a decision and I cut out what doesn't work scale what does work and what I say in this is I learned by mistakes for myself I'm hoping you can learn from mine as well. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but we're gonna try. It's a very spiritual keynote. In the sense mm. of so much of entrepreneurship is self work. And most people miss that part, they skip it. Mm-hmm. It kind of feels like you're given this presentation to Ryan from year one. Yeah. Right? Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Four years ago, I was operating under the belief that there was something I didn't know. that there was something I had to figure out and find so that I could build. And 
as I surround myself with the people that we put on stage. I quote Gary Vee a lot in my keynote because he was one of the first people I reached out to to speak at our event. You find that they're not necessarily following a formula, a, even a, like a, a strategy. It's more of a creation. And human beings are the only creature on the planet that can envision something different than what is. Entrepreneurship is a process of creating that. And um, come on in. You don't have to be quiet. Who's there? Hi, guys. Come on in, baby. Come on in. And uh, we get so obsessed. I don't know. Like when we talk, when you talk about money, so many people talk about the reverse engineering of what already is rather than creating the vision. It's totally different. So it, it's why you don't have to worry about copycats because if, if you're envisioning something and you're creating it, that's, that's how you build greatness. And so often we think of, we tie entrepreneurship to money and money is just fuel to create the thing that you want. And um, when it becomes about how do I get the thing, how do I get the result, how do I get the money, it's about reverse engineering what already is, which is the opposite. And I was looking for the thing to reverse engineer. And those are all just strategies to amplify the change that you want. That's the biggest misconception I had, I think anyway. Or maybe I'm just thinking about it because I'm doing a keynote on it. <laughs> when I sat down to write out the big idea behind it, it was I wanted to leave someone feeling like they knew how they could build out the empire that lit them up. Walk away going, I know how to build the empire that's going to make me happy. But in order to do that, you have to go really deep into finding out what that is. And so I want the big takeaway to be, I can see my empire and I know how to build it. But what I think the biggest takeaway is going to be is my uniqueness is actually my gift that points me to the empire that I want to build my prediction can't wait man you're gonna knock him dead maybe <laughs> i'm always nervous I'm always nervous and then i get on stage and it's like quiet that's when i just leave my body mm. yeah yeah <laughs> took me a long time to own that by the way and 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 so much of what i'm talking about is that is it it took me many years to just understand that the things that are easy for us are usually like they point us to our greatest gift like when things are hard it means we're doing something mm -hmm. against our will and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure basketball was never hard for LeBron speaking was never hard for me and some people are like what speaker I have never done a speaker training ever and now I mm. can't because I just said it on camera so I have never ever done a speaker training it's just what I am naturally good at doing. And I always overlooked that because it's like everybody can, everyone can do that. That's when you say, but everybody can do that. That's, that's usually your greatness that you need to amplify. Because not everybody can do that. Because not everybody's you. It, it's funny. We work so hard on our weaknesses and ignore our strengths. And I think, um, like when you're a kid, all you know is your strengths. You don't even know your weaknesses. So I think there's a, a lot of work 
to just undo the work of thinking that it's supposed to be hard and it, it's not supposed to be easy and natural. And like the thing that you'll ultimately be greatest at is the thing that comes natural and easy to you. It's why it's like why it's why we're talking. All I know how to do is communicate. <laughs> right? Written, stage, podcast, video. It's what I'm best at. So you build the business around the thing that you want to amplify and then you marry that to other people's things that they amplify and then you get that. That's it. That's awesome. I think a lot of people, that makes sense. Like people see Gary Vee and they're like, oh, I need to be like that. I need to be that dude. Right. Mm -hmm. it just looks cool to be on like social media. Right. That's exactly <laughs> Saying, right. Saying like inspirational that's, stuff. That's exactly right. It looks cool. It's sexy right now. It gets attention. It gets status. But you know what? Hi, Daddy. Where are you going, sweetie? You saying hi or bye? Hi. Oh, come here, sweetie. Come here. Okay, see you later. Come, you can come sit next to me. All right. Anyway, when I was in middle school, I changed schools. I went. I was going to the super Christian private school, the elementary school. Then I went to the middle school, and I remember my mom saying something. She was, she was giving me a warning about trying to be like the jocks and trying to be mm. like the everyone else. And she said, that will be popular for a while, but you know what will always be popular? Being a nice person. And in the same way, it's sexy and fun for a while to try and be like this person, be like this person, be like this person. You know what's always gonna be popular? Being good at what you do and amplifying your strength. Always. Mmm. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Esther, you can come over here if you want. You can be a you can we're just talking. You can you can do your thing. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <Esther>. <laughs> I don't want to do my thing. <laughs>